one thing that this can definitely help you with the fact that it can answer questions for you basically for example if there are there are eight paragraphs that are not connected to each other you can ask questions that can and this can kind of connect you know all eight of the paragraphs and give you some custom answer this video i'm going to show you how private gpt works effectively it's a piece of code that allows you to query your csv txt or pdf files locally without really using pinecone or open ai so basically without paying any money the best thing about this is that it's completely 100 percent private so it runs in your local system and you don't really need to worry about to worry about your data going or leaving your computer. You can just turn your internet off, and this approach will still uh, give you results. Okay, so here's the GitHub repository where you can find files for private GPT. Now, in order to kind of make this run, you need two things. Number one, you need Python. So ensure that you go to this website and download Python. And second, you, second, you need Git, which will allow you to clone these repositories in your local system. Right. So once you have both of these done, just go to the private GPT page, click here on code and copy this command, copy this link, go to the directory where you want to paste these details, right? For example, I want all the files to be replicated here. Just um, select this, click here and type CMD. This will open command prompt for you. And here, what you need to type is git clone. Then you paste the link to the repository that you want to add in the system. What this will effectively do is it will clone all the details in the local system like this. Now, at first, when you're cloning these details, you will need, you will have a file like this, right? So example dot environment, you need to remove example and ensure that it's named environment. Second thing you need to do is download two files. So this is model one and this is model two. These are basically your GPT for all models that will run locally in your system. These are not very heavy models, pretty lightweight models. So ensure you can download these in your local system. Um, and then go to the file, go to the folder where you clone all these files, create a new folder called models and inside models place both of these files that you had downloaded. Okay. After that, what you want to do is open the environment file and ensure that you have your files located in these locations, right? So for my, for me, it's models and then location and then the name of the model. So if you go inside model, you can find both of these files. So ensure that you are, you've kind of done this um, and then you can close this. And at this point, you're pretty much done. Now also note that in order to add these PDFs, you need to uh, go inside the source document. There will be one document by default, but you can add your PDFs here or you can remove this file and add your files here. This is, a P this is the PDF for 250 mid journey prompts um, that I'm going to be querying using private GPT. If you want access to this PDF, I'll add a link in the description from where you can get it. These are basically a set of prompts that I was, you know, that I kind of collated when I was learning mid journey. Okay. So once you have your source document placed, all the models downloaded, um, an environment file setup, you're pretty much done. If you have VS code, feel free to kind of open a folder in the VS code. So, uh, click here, open folder and select your private GPT folder. It will kind of get all the files. Kind of gets easy because you need to in run the ingest here. So, um, if your VS is set up, just go to ingest and click here. It will run the uh, code for you right now. Note that it kind of takes some time because it's looking through the PDF and dividing text into certain brackets and creating embeddings from where it will, via which it will kind of refer your questions. So note that this will take some time. So it looks like this is done. It took around, say, it took around 10, 15 minutes. And um, I think at this point it is ready. So once it is ready, go to private GPT and run this file now. So effectively what this will do is it will kind of load the embeddings that you had added in the DB. You can see uh, if you go inside D, there are a bunch of these files created. These files basically have details about the PDF that you had fed to the model. Now, once you run this, at this point, you can see your query is ready. Now you can start asking questions to the model. Now what it's doing, it's kind of looking at all the embeddings and figuring out where this specific question may be answered best. So it's kind of deriving some answer based on this. So while this happens, you know, if you don't have VS code, you can still run this. And how you do this is by uh, going to the path again and typing CMD and doing Python ingest.py. This will, this will run this file which we had run in VS code and it will do the exact same thing. Once you finish running that file, you will now have to run private gpt.py. So you don't necessarily need VS code in order to run it, but it's a good addition because it kind of simplifies uh, the management of the files and also kind of running these programs uh, in real time.
Anyways, let's just wait for this query to complete. Note that this kind of runs on your CPU. So if you don't have a great CPU, this may take some time. I don't know how to set it up on the GPU. I'm sure there may be methods in order to set this up. I'm sure there may be ways in order to set up there may be ways to set this up in your uh, on your GPU, but this current method only only runs on your um, CPU. Also, by the way, if you're interested in generative AI, free to kind of join our Discord group. This is where we talk everything about generative AI. So every new AI update, or maybe if there are new things happening in AI or new content that you should know in AI, this is where we discuss all of that. On a separate note, um, take a look at my CPU usage here. I don't have a great computer, but it kind of consumes crazy amount of CPU in order to run this locally. So if there's some sound coming out of your CPU after you're running this, you know where this is coming. Okay. So looks like it's kind of finally generating the output for us. Um, you can see how slow this is. A hyper realistic painting of a bustling cityscape at night. Um, so it understood the question. And then it went into the PDF and it generated the answer for us. Um, the question that you need to answer is, you know, the amount of time it kind of took to find that for you. Um, it would probably take you half that time to do it yourself. So the question, um, you know, unless you have a great CPU setup, do you really need to query that PDF so bad in order to run this in your local system? Now, obviously, if you're looking at uh, production building like a production app using this then it's a different story because you can use or you know you can use the cloud computing power in order to process this faster but if you look at the speed right now it's terribly slow and like the amount of time i'd wait for this model to generate something for me i'd actually do a control f and find it myself in the document or a pdf but one thing that the you know, one thing that this can definitely help you with the fact that it can answer questions for you. Basically, for example, if there are there are eight paragraphs that are not connected to each other, you can ask questions that can and this can kind of connect both of, you know, all eight of the paragraphs and give you some custom answer that may suit your needs. But the better way to do this is still using OpenAI's embeddings because that's a much more faster method than really taking this approach, at least at this point of time. So I hope I was able to communicate the positive and the negative side of using this approach or using private GP at this point. So I hope you're able to make a decision yourself with respect to if you want to or you don't want to use it, um, especially at a point where it is today, right? But otherwise, I hope this adds value to you guys. Um, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.